Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a quick and easy cartoon style illustration in Illustrator. We're going to use the Pen tool and the Live Paint tool. Before we get started with the tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to create. What we're going to do is something like this, a sort of cartoon style rendition of a vanity and a window and this floor behind it. And I'm going to show you how you can do this really very quickly and very easily. So let's get started. I'm going to move the image out of the way and let's create a brand new file to use. It doesn't really much matter what size, but I'm going to work with a square image because my image is really a little bit more sort of portrait or square than it is landscape. I'm just going to square this up in the middle of the screen by pressing Control or Command Zero. Now I want to open my swatches panel because I have a swatch already created for this, so I'm just going to go and open my swatch library. I have a user defined swatch library as bathroom pinks. So let's just go and grab that. And so here's the color group that we're going to use for our illustration. And now let's get started with the pieces that are going towards creating our illustration. I'm going to start by filling the artboard with a color and I have a script that I really like to use for doing this and all it does is just creates a rectangle that is the artboard size. So here it is here and I'm just going to fill it with a color. So I just want it to be this sort of pinky color. Well, let's make sure we select it first and then fill it with the pink color and I don't want it to have a stroke on it. Now I'm actually going to lock this layer so it's not going to move and I'm going to add a new layer on which I'm going to create all my shapes. And I'm going to do the shapes just using the pen tool. So first of all, um, let's get our cupboard into position. So I'm going to start with the outline of the cupboard and since this is a sort of cartoon style element, um, I don't want everything to line up really nicely. So I want to be careful that that's not the case. Now I'm still using these settings of a pink fill and no stroke. I'm just going to press the letter D to go to default and I'm just going to leave the white on for now, but we're going to take that off in a minute. So having created the outline of the bathroom sink or the vanity, let's go and create the other bits that go in it. At this point, if you want the pen tool to stop drawing, just press the letter V because that takes you to the direct selection tool. Then press the letter P again and you can start the pen tool. Now that's particularly important when we actually don't finish off some of these shapes and that's not a problem to not finish off these shapes because of the live paint tool that we're going to be using to actually paint the shapes. So right now I'm just doing the cupboard doors and again we want things to be anything but straight. But I do want to fill these shapes. I want to finish these shapes so I'm going to make sure that I click at the commencing point before I finish with them. Now the handles for these are just a single line. So I'm just going to create that as a single line. I'm going to do a couple more. Well actually I just mess that one up. Let's just undo that. Let's do our V for direct selection tool, P for pen tool and let's start the next handle. Again V and P and start the next handle and then V and P and start the final handle. Now these handles I want to do something a little bit different with so I'm just going to grab all four of those and they're going to be the last four things I drew. So they're all of these here. Now I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to go to the direct selection tool. I want to increase the stroke on these shapes. So again with the direct selection tool selected, I'm going to take them up to about three points. And let's take this up and this and this. And I want to make the ends round on them so they look sort of like handles. So Let's do that as well. Let's make sure we've got the right one selected. And round the handles. Select this one, round its handles. Okay, now that I've got all these four handles 
created the way I want them to do, be, I want to expand their appearance. So I'm going to choose Object Expand and I'm just going to click OK. And now they have no stroke and a question mark fill. In fact, I want to press the letter D so these have the same default appearance as the rest of the image. So that's exactly what I want this to look like. Now this one's a bit small so let's just size it up a bit. Now let's do the top of the vanity. So we're going to the pen tool again and I'm going to create the top of the vanity. So I'm just going to click and do that. And I'm not going to finish this shape. So again V for direct selection tool, P for the pen tool and now let's create the back or the side here of the vanity. And again V and P because I don't want to finish drawing this. Now we need a vanity sink and that's going to be a circle so I'm going to choose, well it's not going to be a circle, it's going to be ellipse. I'm just going to choose the ellipse tool and let's just draw it out here for now. I've drawn my ellipse and now I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key once I've selected the direct selection tool and then just drag another version of it out of the way. So this is going to give me my vanity sink. So I'm just going to grab these two pieces and just position them into place and size them down if they need to be. The tap is going to be done the same way as the handles were. So I'm going to click here. Let's click again and we're going to just draw our tap shape. Again, I don't want a fill on this, I just want my stroke and I want the stroke to be more than this size. So let's go for like a four point stroke and again we're going to expand this but I think I just need to reshape it before I do that. I think I've got a slight problem with its overall shape here. Yep, let's call that good. And now let's do Object Expand because again I want this to have no fill and a black stroke like everything else and I'm just going to drag it into position too and rotate it if it needs it. Okay, the taps are done exactly the same way as the handles here. So let's again go with the pen tool. I'm going to draw a couple of lines and I need to set this back to the default setting so let's just press the letter D. I'm actually going to undo that and start that one again. So let's again go and get the pen tool, press the letter D and now I can just draw my tap pieces. Press V and P so I can draw a second line and then V and P and now I want to put the little pedestal that the tap is standing on. Okay, having done that, press the letter V for the direct selection tool, select all these pieces, increase the stroke, object, expand, we want to expand the appearance and then I'm going to use the pathfinder here just to make this a single shape. So I'm going to choose unity here and there is my tap. For convenience I'm going to duplicate this. Normally I would create a second one but there's no point in creating a second one right now. I can just copy the original so let's move that into position. There's one tap and here's the other tap. Now let's see the window at the back. Now I'm running out a little bit of space but let's just draw at least the bottom part of the window. Again the pen tool. I'm just going to draw the window sill and then we're going to draw the window. Again V and P and then the window again here, V and P. Probably just join these up so that I have an element that I can dump some paint into in a minute and then let's draw our inside window. This one of them and then the second. Now these need shadows behind them so I'm going to target the direct selection tool and I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag a second version away from the first because I want these to be the same shape basically but just offset slightly. So let's just make this a little bit taller. 
want these two to be pretty much over each other but I do want the area to expand a bit behind it. Well, you'll see the shadow in a minute and see how it all works out. I'm just going to bring that in a bit. So that's looking pretty good there. Now we need to put the floor in and again the floor is going to be a similar process. I'm going to create the floor by creating a rectangle. So I'm just going to create a sort of rectangle. Well actually it's more like just a standard four-sided figure and then again V and P set this to the default value. So I'm just going to click outside of that shape. I just want to make sure I don't have it selected and now I'm going to start adding my tiles to the floor. And again I don't want these to be exactly symmetrical. I want it again to look a little bit cartoon style. Okay, I've done those pressing V and P in between each of these so that we turn off the pen tool and then turn it back on again. Now I'm getting this overlap of colour but I'm really not too worried about that. We're just going to select the whole piece in a minute and turn off the fill and just deal with this stroke. So I think we can just ignore this for now. Okay, I've pretty much got the pieces that I want to work with. There was a little bit more detail in the original but you've got the general idea as to how you put these pieces together. Let's select everything here and let's first of all get rid of the fill. So we don't want any fill on any of these pieces. It's just control zero to get everything back in the middle here. And again I'm going to select everything and this time I'm going to turn off the stroke as well. So we've got sort of nothing except the basic shapes visible on the screen. And now I'm going to turn this into a live paint group. So I'm going to choose object and then live paint make. And now we can paint this with the live paint tool. So I'm going to first of all make sure that I have the live paint tool selected and here's the live paint bucket tool. I'm going to click in here to target this as my first set of colors. In fact what I want to do is the sink so I'm going to target the pink for the sink and I'm just going to click to drop the color in. And what you'll see has happened is that Illustrator has created shapes from the shapes that I was using. So this is a shape and this is a shape and this is a shape and I can color them however I want them to be. So all I'm going to do is to pick colors from the color swatch and just dump it into each of these little elements that together give me the side of the vanity here. And let's go for another color and we're going to do the front of the vanity and that's going to be in a few pieces because you can see that the flooring is underneath and that's causing us to have lots of triangles to fill in. But it's really pretty simple to do. So just dumping the paint into these areas and now I want a pink for my cupboards. So let's just dump pink paint in everywhere we need it. And then the handles are sort of this dark brown. So again, let's dump the paint into the handles. Now I think I've got, mm, it might help if I actually selected the right dark brown to get my handles. Okay, and now the floor is that same dark brown. So I'm going to just click in the flooring and I'm going to click in every alternate piece of flooring here, every alternate triangle so that we're creating this sort of diamond pattern in the flooring. And this one will have to be the same color. And now let's go to our second piece of flooring color and now we're just going to drop that into every other one. Now we need to do the sink here and the sink was a dark color around the edge so let's create that darker edge and then the basin itself was just pink so I'm just going to drop pink into these areas that are the basin. Again the taps were the same dark brown so let's go and get all the plumbing fixtures here. Just make sure we've got all the little pieces that add up to these. 
and the final piece is the window so I'm going to use this for the base of the window and then let's use a different brown for the outside well actually let's go a bit lighter on that and let's use that brown for the shadows or the second part of the window and then we just want white for the window Okay, now let's press Control 0 to get back into the center of the image and let's just click away from the cartoon image and this is what we've got. You can see that the live paint tool together with the pen tool has allowed us to create various shapes that we can then fill to create our cartoon image and it was all done relatively quickly. So I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my tutorials here on my YouTube channel and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.